One of the technologies that I'm finding super interesting right now is PaaS in general, right? Platform as a service. So what platform as a service allows you to do is take your code, put it in a place and run it. That's pretty much it. So they manage the software for you. They manage the infrastructure for you. Everything that has to be managed from like an IT perspective and from a standard engineering perspective, it's really all done for you. Really what you have to worry about is here's your code. It needs to go to a place. It needs to go out to your end users. That's it. Now, if you take a look at say Azure or AWS, they all have platform as a service or PaaS offerings as well. Uh, but they also have like IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service, SaaS, which is software as a service. Now there's one company that I'm really loving right now, and they solely focus on platform as a service and that's Heroku. So in this video, what we're going to see is one, we're going to spin up a Heroku instance. And then two, we're going to take a look at some architecture before we take a look at the instance and spinning it up and, and setting up the account. Let's go ahead and take a look at the infrastructure or I'm sorry, the architecture. Okay, so pass or platform as a service, right? So traditionally, let's say you had a C sharp application or Node.js application. And before this application could go to the infrastructure, you would have to spin up a few different services. You'd have a server here, maybe a Linux server. Over here, maybe you'd have a router, have a firewall, right? You have some security protocols. Now, all of these things, before you could get your application over here, you would have to have somebody spin this up, right? Like IT, engineering, yourself. Now, instead of having to do this, you now only have to worry about Heroku. So what Heroku is going to do is literally manage all of this for you. The only thing that you have to care about is the code. So now you can say, take a web application, throw it up into Heroku with a few different steps, and then boom, there's your application. So let's take a look at spinning up Heroku and getting started. I'm on my web browser here, and I'm just going to type in Heroku. Okay, I'm going to click on the cloud application platform URL. So as you can see, I can sign up for free. So let's go ahead and do this. I type in some information, last name, type in email address, company. Okay, so now I can choose my primary development language. So this is essentially what code you wanna push out to Heroku. So I'm gonna keep it easy and I'm gonna go with Python. Let's create that account. So now I'm gonna have to go in and check my email. I'm gonna do that and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back here, I have my set up password screen here. This is just like, I got the email from Heroku. I click to set the password and I'm gonna do this. So let me give this a password, right? Put a symbol here. Okay. So I'm gonna set the password and log in. Ooh, passwords that have been reported as compromised on another site cannot be interesting. Okay. So I'm gonna open up my password manager here. Okay, so I'm gonna put my password here. I'm gonna go ahead and set password and log in. So now as you can see, I'm at the welcome page. I'm gonna click here to proceed. And then this is the part where I can start setting up my application. So for example, as you can see, these are the languages that Heroku currently supports. Then I can go ahead and I can create a team here. So I can call this DevOps. You must add a valid credit card to create a team. Okay, well, I'm not gonna do that. So it's gonna leave this as a basic team here. 
So I have two options. I can create a new app and I can create a new pipeline. Let's go ahead and choose Python. So getting started on Heroku with Python. Okay, cool. So this is just a little getting started tutorial. Before I do that, just curious here. Okay, so we're gonna call this web app. Must start with lowercase. Okay. Add to pipeline, create a new pipeline. Interesting, okay. So I have two options here. I have staging and I have production. Um, unfortunate that I don't have any dev stage, right? So I have like a UAT stage and I have a production stage. I wonder if, hmm, doesn't look like, maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't look like I can choose uh, to create like a new stage. So that's fine. So I have a few different deployment options here and oh, this is cool. So they actually set up everything for you on like how to actually deploy, which is great. So I can do a few different things. I can use Heroku Git, uh, which it looks like it's just like they have their own distributed version control system. I haven't seen that too much. That's fine. I can connect via github which is cool uh, and i can i can connect through a container registry oh cool okay perfect so this is it looks like roku cli here roku docker ps okay cool so looks like you can just hook up to like any container registry i think it it seems like i want or i wonder if it's just their container registry Oh no, yeah, Heroku Container Registry. So it looks like it's their own container registry, which is very cool. That's perfect. So let's go to the overview here and we can see any add-ons. So hmm, I wonder if I click on new add-on, find more add-ons. Oh, this is cool. Use Amazon S3 from your Heroku. Uh, do they have any from Azure? Let's see. Do, do, do. Nope, it doesn't. Let's see. I'm not seeing anything Azure. Okay, so nothing from Azure specifically. If I go back here. Uh, where was it? Oh. Uh, Azure Explore. Okay, it's gonna just take me to the same page. Okay, so it looks like they're a little bit more AWS friendly than they are. Hold on a sec. Let's see. Google, Roku, Azure add-ons. They have some S3 stuff. Looks like they have some Google stuff. I don't know if that's GCP or just. Google, um, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't look like they have too, too much on the Azure side, which is fine. They, looks like they support AWS a little bit more. So now let's go back here. So this is the resource if I wanna add in any add-ons, right? I have my overview here based on activity, how much I'm paying, collaboration information, right? I have my deployment steps here. I have some metrics, so let's see if I can configure any metrics. Oh, looks like these are some add-ons as well, maybe. Metrics are not currently available. Oh, okay, because I don't have an app deployed, so there's probably gonna be like no default metrics that I can see, like no like default monitors or anything like that. Um, so it looks like I can connect to GitHub here. Use GitHub, you can link your deploys to the code on, okay. So let's go ahead and connect my GitHub. Connect to GitHub. Okay, let's type in my GitHub email address. Let's find my password. All right, what is this asking for? Uh, okay, so authorize. Okay, perfect. So I can choose. Is this gonna like, let's say. So I have a few different Python repos here in my uh, my GitHub. So hold on a sec. I thought I had some stuff. Um, 
I know I have a repo that I built a Python API for Kubernetes. Let's see if I can find this here. I forget what I called it. Kubefront. Okay, so let's look up this. We'll search here. Perfect. Before I connect, I'll just show you guys what this is. So this is pretty much just like a little um, a little API that I wrote that just essentially it'll it'll like look for different namespaces and pods and stuff like that locally, right? So it's just like a like a local host web app that you could deploy. You could deploy it anywhere really, but what it'll do is like it'll take your Kubernetes configuration and let's say it's hooked up to like AKS for example, right? What it'll do is it'll just search for like pods and services and deployments and stuff like that. Um, so that's like the old, probably the only web app that I have on my Git repo. So we'll just connect that. Let's see once this connects. Okay, cool. So this is connected. It's assigned to my staging. Okay. Um, can enable. Okay. So I can enable like um, continuous deployment if I want to from here. All right. So like anything, if there's something say hits, you know, my master branch, it'll automatically deploy, which is pretty cool. I'm going to enable that. Um, I can deploy from certain branches, which is really great. Uh, let's see what else. So I wonder if I can configure metrics here now. I'm not seeing anything specific on a profile. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to probably have to dive a little bit deeper into the metrics. Not a hundred percent sure what that would ultimately be coming from, but that's cool. Um, what's this? Method not allowed. Okay, that makes sense. Probably closed off. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then here's where it looks like I can actually build. Your app can be found. Okay, cool. Heroku, welcome to your new app. So this is actually, I can like add a domain here if I want to. I can configure SSL. Perfect. Yeah. So what this is going to do is this is kind of like your main page for your application, right? And this is, would be really where, where you deploy it uh, would be right here. Perfect. Cool. I want to just try one more thing. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Let's maybe just, I don't know, test. Oh, test not available. Test one, test 12. Cool. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to call it node. Wow. Uh, node MGL. Okay. Oh, I wonder if, yeah, I bet it's not available because since they create like their own domain for you. So if I go back here and then I go to my application, and I go to settings. No, wait, was it not settings? I forget. Where was it? It was. Hmm. No, that's just for the pipeline. I don't want the pipeline. I want the application. Am I going crazy? Uh, connect to GitHub. Okay, here we go. So. No, that wasn't it. Where was the, uh, hmm. Oh, okay. Here we go. So I thought I was going crazy because like I didn't see all these options up here. So if I go to access, for example, or settings, sorry, it creates, yeah, see, so well, <laughs> this whole rant here was me trying to figure this out is that it creates this custom domain name that you give your application has to be unique because it's like it's essentially open to the world. So I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and create that. And what I wanna see, not the add-ons, let's see. Where is the code? Figure SSL. Let's say resources. 
okay yeah not able to find it right now but so yeah so this is uh you know pretty much just a very high level of what heroku is and i'm going to make another video on actually like deploying the application and seeing the application live thank you everybody for joining me i really appreciate it and i'll see everybody again next time